This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. All year, I've been waiting for the film that feels like an event, the talk of the town, the moment, the cat's pajamas. And I should have seen this coming, but Wicked seems to be that film this year. Wicked is the long-awaited film adaptation of the now classic Broadway musical of the same name by Winnie Holzman, which is technically an adaptation of Gregory Maguire's 1995 novel, Wicked, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West, which is based on the classic 1939 film, The Wizard of Oz, which is based on the novel by L. Frank Baum. There's layers to this shit. The film tells the story of Elphaba and Glinda, how their friendship came to be, and how they went on to become the Wicked Witch of the West and Glinda the Good Witch. It stars Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande. It's directed by John Chu, and man, a lot to unpack with this one. You may have noticed in the last few months that I've used Wicked, or what I'd seen of Wicked from the trailers, as a punching bag, the poster child for an ongoing frustration I've had with new releases coming out of big boy studios. Flat, dull light, muddy visuals, boring color grade, uninspired camera movements, you get it. With the exception of only a handful of films, we're living in one of the ugliest eras of studio filmmaking in my opinion. Thankfully John Chu was asked about this in an interview with the Globe and Mail, where he responded, I mean, there's color all over it. I think what we wanted to do was immerse people into Oz to make it a real place. Because if it was a fake place, if it was a dream in someone's mind, then the real relationships and the stakes that these two girls are going through wouldn't feel real. I don't know why I'm so disappointed by this answer. Why was I wishing he had just admitted that there was some technical reason. Why are we bullshitting ourselves that it needed to look more realistic for us to feel for the characters? I bring this film up way too often, but I couldn't stop thinking about Greta Gerwig's Barbie during this film, and it's worth bringing up in this context too. Because Barbie leaned into the artifice about as much as it could, a big part of their press tour was talking about these big, colorful sets, referring back to classic Hollywood sets that feel like a thing of the past. Barbie famously went pretty far thanks to how much it resonated with people, and it still managed to lean into the artifice I gotta say, even the real world scenes in Barbie were more saturated than Wicked, even if they teetered on looking a bit too much like a car commercial. This discourse is pretty drawn out at this point. I'm the last person to talk about the color in this film, and I'll get to this in a second, but I did kind of get past it after a while because of just how much fun I had watching the film. The movie does work in spite of this, but for a musical like Wicked, when I can see with my own eyes how interesting and colorful the sets are in the film, it's a damn shame they aren't lit in a way that allows me to get lost in the you can't make a film like Wicked where the world is as expansive and as wondrous as it is, where there's literally like talk of wizards, and work completely against that with the lighting. And it's not just this film. Look at Wonka next to the original film. Look at Dial of Destiny next to Temple of Doom. Even Gladiator 2 versus the original Gladiator. I guess the point is, I was really hoping I would feel different about this when watching the actual movie. And I have to say, there are scenes in the woods, and especially in Emerald City, that feel properly vibrant. I'll talk more about this entire section of the film in a second, but I actually really enjoyed how the entire final hour of this film looked and felt. I started to realize there was absolutely nothing more I could have asked for from it. The Shiz University stuff is very hit or miss, sometimes being pretty frustrating to look at. I loved the costume design and all the choreography, but there was a part of me that felt like I was watching behind the scenes footage of a great rehearsal, not the final film. Let's just, let's move on from the colors though. Let's let's talk about the, the ladies. Both Cynthia Erivo and Ariana Grande knocked it out of the park. Their chemistry is incredible throughout the entire film, and they're both endlessly entertaining to watch. I'm a pretty big Ariana Grande fan, I gotta admit. I didn't really have expectations for her as an actor going into this. I was in a truly neutral state, but I cannot sit here and lie like I wasn't almost immediately charmed. She has great comedic timing, she has great screen presence, and those critiques on her singing not being musically enough are overblown in my opinion. Would it work as well on stage? I don't know, who cares? It sounds good in the movie, that's what matters. All of that said though, Cynthia Erivo kinda blows Grande out of the water in the vocals department. My goodness, the moment the film lets her go a little crazy town with it, she really takes off. What an amazing voice. Here's something you probably didn't know about me. I sang some of these songs in middle school choir. I think I even had a solo in there, but maybe not, I don't remember. Which is to say I did have some emotional connection going into this. I am a fan of the music from the musical, so there was a little bit of bias. But I don't know how you couldn't get chills during Defying Gravity. That scene is just electric. I don't know the science behind this shit, but whatever they put in that song makes me feel like I'm levitating out of my seat. I go to another place. Popular was a little underwhelming, but maybe that's just me. I know this is common in movie musicals because it's a way of building tension, but this one really goes crazy with the starting and stopping and starting and stopping. I get why they do that. It works some of the time, like it did in Defying Gravity. But damn, is that why this thing is almost 
three hours long. I think this would be a much better film if they just tightened it up a bit in the cutting room. Again, once we hit Emerald City, it really takes off, and I certainly leaned forward in the chair, but it had me asking why it took the entire runtime of a real pain to get there, to get to the meat of the movie. I know musicals kind of work under different rules when it comes to structure, but the entire pace of this felt so off, which, as enjoyable as it was, really does make you feel the length of it. The reasons all lead back to this whole part one, part two bullshit, which is a trend that only rarely works, and in this case, it really doesn't work in my opinion. I know if they didn't do this, it would have been like five hours long, but just, I wish there was a different way they could have structured this to make this feel more like its own standalone thing. And while we're talking negative, let me just talk about John Chu for a second. He's fine. He gets the job done. But damn, I didn't even like In the Heights, and this feels like a downgrade in the direction department. You look at In the Heights and you, you got that weird thing he did on the side of the building, you got the giant swimming pool choreography. It was a film that made use of the space of the city, doing a lot with a little, while Wicked is doing the bare minimum with the excessive amount of resources at its disposal. It's got these amazing leads, these gorgeous sets, a gripping story. Chu has all of the pieces, all of it is working in his favor, and he just uses a dolly track for like every single shot of every single musical number. He is a completely competent director. You can't call him a bad one, but it's you look at what Spielberg did with West Side Story and it's like Damn, brother. For as negative as all this sounds, and goddamn does it sound negative, I still, again, found this really enjoyable. I had a really fun time at the movies. I was seriously surprised by how much both leads do. The musical numbers are just as amazing as I remember them being. The story is really touching. And considering how long I've been using this film's trailer as a punching bag, I liked the movie as a whole a lot more than I expected to. But at the same time, I felt like everything I was worried about did end up happening. The thing about such an iconic musical like this is it's gonna win you over pretty fast. It didn't need to do a ton of heavy lifting. And there are aspects of it that surprised me, like the performances, like the physical sets. To really go the extra mile, to really shock you and put you in awe, it has to step it up in the actual filmmaking, the direction, which this really didn't do. Again, it does eventually get there when we arrive in Emerald City. It makes me excited to see part two, but I'm so fucking tired of saying that. I'm so sick of being like, oh, they're holding back on purpose. This was just a tease. For once, can we just get it right the first time? Anyway, that's what I have to say about Wicked. I'm sure this will be a completely fine and normal comment section. Thanks for watching. Go watch Wicked and form your own opinion. And before you head out, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. With Squarespace, you can start a completely personalized website with their new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint, where you can choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up, tailored to your brand or business business and optimized for every device. Easily launch that website and get discovered fast with their integrated optimized SEO tools so that you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. I'm personally a big fan of their video collections feature, which allows you to upload video content, organize your video library, and showcase that content on beautiful video pages, even giving you the option to sell access to your video library by adding a paywall to your content. Not to mention perhaps the best part about Squarespace, which is their visual design tools, grow credibility, and engage visitors with an unrivaled suite of visual design effects built in and ready to go on any Squarespace website. Then connect social and multimedia accounts in just a few clicks to extend your brand's footprint. Does it sound great? Because it is. You can go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch that beautiful website, go to squarespace.com slash Karsten to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks for watching and listening to me. I'll see you in the next one.